Oh, there she goes. Whoa. Hey there, what's going on everyone? This is Chris back with the Beamer Barn and today we're gonna to be working on my E39 M5 wagon. This thing has not gotten a lot of attention in the past few weeks, I guess, just because we've been really hustling and bustling on our E46 project and we just picked up that E39 528i, which has some really cool, interesting content coming up. But for now, we're gonna be working on my E39 M5 wagon, doing a couple of basic repairs, some things that I kinda of forgot to do when we first installed some stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we have on the table here behind me and then you're going to come along with me on sort of more of a raw unedited format video where we're just going to figure out things together and kind of share thoughts on the e39 platform so i hope you enjoy the video and if you do like this sort of content please leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel but without further ado let's get straight to work so here we have everything on the table in front of us that we need to address today. The biggest thing here is a new steering wheel. So I was actually able to source this from the junkyard pick and pull. This came off of an E38 7 series pre-facelift. So it's the same single stage airbag that I currently have and it doesn't have any noticeable damage or dry rotting on the leather, which is great. It could use a little bit of a cleaning. There's some dirt and debris in here. So we're gonna clean it up real well before we install it. And the other great thing is it has the attached steering angle sensor. I'm really hoping that this thing is good and in working condition because I have a bad steering angle sensor. So two birds, one stone, we're gonna get rid of a light on the dashboard and be able to put a nice new steering wheel on here. Some other cosmetic things, I've got a BMW badge here because the one on my car is uh, Alpina badge. It's super, super faded out. Uh, and then here is a light switch, which I kind of modified. So I'm gonna show you that once we get to installing it. I've also got a fuel filter here to install. This is something that I just have been putting off for a while. This is an M5 filter. It's gonna go underneath the car. And then finally, I have some rust reformer spray because we need to disassemble the rear airbag cups because unfortunately, I realized that they were starting to have some surface rust on there. And clearly I forgot to paint them when I installed them and the steel plates, they were not painted or sealed from the fabricator from the factory. So we're gonna be taking care of all these little mods today. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. And by the end of this episode, our car is gonna be in much better driving condition. You know, sometimes it's easy to just forget about the small stuff, but knocking these things out all at once is gonna make one big difference. And I think it's gonna be really gratifying. So let's go ahead and get to work and start with the steering wheel. All right, so I got a T30 little driver here and goose is gonna help us out today but you're gonna go ahead and shove this behind the back these are the pre facelift wheels um, so they have like uh, screws on the back here whereas if you have like a sport wheel they've got like a, a little clip that you have to disengage with like a flathead so it's a little different but this is what takes the airbag off and I'm just now realizing as well that we're gonna have to disconnect the battery because we don't want the airbag getting an airbag fault or something like that go ahead and unlock the wheel so i can get better access there we go oh all right so loosen these up all the way and then let's go disconnect the battery oh man i gotta i gotta change these hood struts soon you guys can definitely count on an upcoming diy for the uh the whatever the trunk struts i guess you call them because there's two in there some of them are for the window just the window and then two of them are just for the trunk but definitely that's one of those things that uh i need to address that's one of those things you put in the back of your mind move our subwoofer right here and finally a 10 millimeter on the battery and then our battery's disconnected. So now our car safer to work on. <laughs> and uh, I think I told you guys this before, I like to lock the trunk so I can put the door down. And that way the trunk's not gonna close on its own. But now we'll go ahead. Mm -hmm. Put this out. All right. All right, so this is the hard part is doing things with one hand and holding a camera is no fun, but I'm willing to make the sacrifice for you guys. And I could probably get like a lav mic, one of those mics a lot of guys use that you put on your chest, uh, but I don't know, that just seems too easy, right? No, I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little more personable to hold the camera and really get close and dirty. So uh, one thing is I think 
We're gonna have to transfer over the ground wire because the one on the new wheel is broken. Um, and then just, we have this 16 millimeter right here to get the wheel off. But before you take these wheels off, you actually have to like remove the steering column trim here. And I think there's like a clip. Yep, so there's a clip down there, but I don't have the clip screwed in. So I should be able to just yank it down. There you go. I don't think that we need to pull it all the way out. Uh, and then we got a couple of connectors, one and two. So these two connectors for the wheel, and now we can actually take the 16 millimeter off. Mm -hmm. Screw off, and come here. Come on. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there she goes. All right, let's get this thing out. So, uh, yeah, like I said, this uh, this little ground point right here, I think it's for the horn. I broke it off at the junkyard. It just, when I pulled on the connector, it just broke off completely. So I'm gonna use one of these quick solder marine seal connectors. I'll put some links in the description below. I think we'll use red. And all we're gonna do is uh, strip off this wire and cut this one, strip it off as well, and just put the connector on our new wheel. All right, so that's all soldered up right here. I love those uh, I love those quick seal connectors. They make things super easy. But while that's cooling down and while we have the extra room, we're gonna go ahead and replace the light switch on the car. Now the reason my light switch is bad or the reason we're replacing it is because it just totally fell apart one day. As you can see, there's no more dial here. The button's just, you know, on and off because it's, you know, I just, I have it kind of loose on here so I can uh, change the lights and it'll fall off on its own. But as you can see, there's like a whole face here that's missing and it, it just broke apart, like I said. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove, I think the trim pieces right here. Then we have a couple screws, T15, something small torques up there. And we'll pull this out and I'll show you guys what I did to the new light switch so that this doesn't happen again. So there we go, removed it. And uh, I just wanna show you guys, here's that, uh, that piece that broke off. Uh, so this is like a 16 millimeter nut here. Uh, let me see if I can get my, uh, there you go. I think we have a gun on it actually. Might as well. Nope, it is not 16, it's 18. Nope, it is 19. 19, super loose, like hand torqued. You really don't want to tighten these too much because otherwise it'll cause the issue that we're having today. And there you go. So it's out. You can see that's what's left of the assembly. And this is what would go on top of it. So if you guys know how to fix this, that'd be cool. I'm probably gonna keep this around just in case we need it for a future project. Uh, but here is our new one that we're gonna install. Let me go ahead and uh, pop the, the cover off so I can show you what I did. Hmm. So here is what I have. And so I pulled this off of a junkyard car, of course, cause I knew that I needed one, I, mine was broken. And when I pulled it off, originally it just split around the outside. So it broke. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to remove one off of a car that's old without breaking it. Uh, it's probably gonna break just like mine did. So around the outside here, it cracked and just split into two. But what I did was since it was a good clean crack and it broke into only two pieces, I glued it back together. Then I went ahead and reinforced it with some plastic weld, which is gonna reinforce that edge and hopefully make it stronger than even OEM so that it doesn't break again in the future. And uh, I guarantee you, I'm not gonna be trying to fumble around for this light switch because uh, I don't want this to happen again. So uh, this one is a little bit damaged. It has like a little uh, crack here in the plastic right where the screw lines up. So I'm not sure if it was like over torqued or, or why, you know, what it has to do with that screw. But you know what, it's in better condition than the one that has fallen apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this. Uh, but I think that we're gonna go ahead and install the face of it here first. So it should just go in to the front and maybe clip in. Let's see. All right, I might need two hands for this. Mm, uh oh, 
All right, so now I see the problem. I reinforced that and it's a little too thick around the edge where it doesn't want to click in. Let's go ahead and try to slim that down a little bit with my hobby knife, that way it'll fit a little bit more flush. All right, finally, after trimming all that plastic weld off, I guess uh, I really put it there for no reason. So I'm, I'm not sure if there, maybe I should have reinforced it from the inside. I, I feel like that might also maybe cause an issue. Actually, probably the inside would have been a better idea. There's probably a little more room there. Um, but I think we'll try it out as, as is. So go ahead and shove that in there. And then our light switch comes in from the back and that's basically what aligns it. And then we put our little nut on, there you go. Tighten it up, not too hard. And we're gonna call that installed. And then we'll put our uh, little button on there. There you go. So yeah, there's a little bit of a marking here, but you know what? I'd rather have a light switch that stays in the, in the dashboard versus just flopping around making noise. And yes, I know that this uh, bezel here is pretty scratched up. I would usually repaint this, but as you can see, it's missing one of the mounting points. And I think it has a crack even. Oh, yep, yeah, it does have a crack right here. Uh, so <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but yeah, maybe I'll super glue, I'll add just a little dab of super glue here and then we'll put it back in the car. I know, again, it's not the best condition, but I have a parts car that I'm hoping to grab one of these from and we'll put it on the M5 wagon. But yeah, let's put this back in. All right, so putting everything back together, looks great, switch looks good. Uh, I just wanna ask you guys a question, maybe you guys can answer this for me. What do you do about these trim piece clips that just tend to break and then don't really do anything? So it acts like a guide, but this one has the actual clip so it holds it down, but this one, it's like broken. So it's half on the inside and the half on the outside broke off. What do you guys do about that? Can you buy that? I'm, I guess you probably could. Is it glued on there? Like, how would you get that off? That's my question. But, just go ahead and press that back on there. Probably need to wipe down those finger smudges. But, you know what? A little bit of play in it because of this screw that's broken. But you know what? It's in there pretty well. And now the light switch works. Of course, the battery's disconnected because the wheel's off. Uh, but yeah, I know that that switch probably works. At least I hope it works because we got it from the junkyard. Um, but yeah, now we need to put the steering wheel on, uh, before we do that, let's clean it. And of course we need to throw away this old wheel cause that's useless. So we cleaned it with some more brake cleaner and got all the gross crud finger grease. Blech. I don't even, I don't even want to think about how gross that was a second ago. Uh, but now since it's leather, we have to rejuvenate it. So we're going to add some uh, Meguiar's rich leather conditioner, put a link in the description. I use this on my seats and just about anything leather in my car because when leather gets dried out, it tends to uh, deteriorate faster. So the best thing you can do is keep it nice and rejuvenated. So I'm going to go ahead and spread this all over the wheel with a uh, little brush and then we'll go ahead and uh, install the wheel. And so with a little bit of editing magic, and there we are, all done. Let's go ahead. I already connected the battery back there, so let's see if, uh, well, I don't blow an airbag in my face right now, obviously, uh, but let's see if uh, everything works. Well, actually, we're gonna need to test drive the car to see if the steering angle sensor works, because it starts off with the light off, and then when I drive it, it notices the angles off and uh, gives me a light, but we can test our light switch. Hopefully that works as well. Yes, it does. So, light switch works. We'll go on a test drive at the end of the video, make sure everything's good. There are some other things that we need to fix, uh, but yeah, let's keep going. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is change out this badge right here, the Alpina badge. It should be pretty easy to get. Actually, I could probably get it with my fingers. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Sorry for the noises. There we go. Oh, and we broke it on the way out, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and pull that little, little nib out. There we go, that was easy. 
famous glass cleaner. It does everything. And yes, this hood needs to be repainted, so I don't really care if I scratch it. No, oh, that's gross. Yeah, this hood's been repainted way too many times. Look, they even just painted over the, the seals here. That's just straight laziness. All right, our new badge. Well, new, got it from the junkyard. And hopefully it's the right size. Wiggle her in. There we go. Nice, looking much better, much cleaner. I will admit, I kind of missed the Alpina badge look. I just don't know how you guys would feel because I do want to put all Alpina badges. I think that would be really cool, especially like on the wheels, the rims, but I want to get the stickers for the side of the car first. And before I do that, I want to repaint the car. So it's kind of like a process, guys. I have it in the back of my mind, uh, but eventually it'd be really cool to do like some of those stickers on the side and like a full exterior Alpina conversion because uh, I think it'd be kind of sleepery and would just kind of represent what I feel about this car, which is being a luxury car, but having a nice engine, having all the power, really fits with like the Alpina model. Uh, but anyways, that is done. The rear badge, I'm realizing, is probably the same size for those of you touring guys. So here's the old badge that's on here, and it came off really easily a second ago, so I kind of just left it loosely on there. And here is just a normal hood badge. It's broken. Uh, but I will tell you that it does fit here, which is very interesting. So this is a hood badge, but it does fit on the back. Of course, it doesn't want to go all the way on. Uh, but yeah, I'm wondering if I can get another one of these badges. I'll definitely grab it and put it on the back here for now. I'm not sure. You think that that's going to stay on, guys? I guess, I don't know. I don't think it is. So we'll pull it off for now, and uh, I guess maybe we'll leave it blank. Yeah, it looks really ugly. So I need to get another badge. Definitely, definitely need to get a badge. So that being done, the next two things is going to be the uh, the spring perches and our fuel filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my quick jacks and throw them under the car here so we can get it up in the air and then we'll take a look at the fuel filter. All right, so I already loosened these covers up here and you can see the uh, M5 fuel filter. Again, mine's been converted from 540 M5, so it looks like that. It's got the quick disconnects on either end and we also have this really nice Schrader valve to bleed excess pressure. So I'm gonna try to bleed a little bit of pressure here, but it's gonna make a mess no matter what. So let's see how much pressure is in the system. Whoop, there we go, good boy. A little more. There you go, okay, hey, not too bad. Look, not, nothing else coming out. So we'll go ahead and loosen the 10 millimeter that's holding the filter in place and then disconnect here and here and then we'll bring it to the bench and transfer the regulator over. So there you go, I've got the old filter off of the regulator assembly. And if you're doing this at home, just a little tip, I, I found it easiest to put it in the vise and keep this stationary. And then I put a 19 millimeter around the nut that's on the filter itself. Now you do notice that this has a crush washer, so we're gonna replace it with a fresh crush washer on our new filter. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it on the assembly and then put it inside the car. All right, our new filter is installed, so we won't be needing this old thing anymore. And now we can go ahead and take the rear wheels off so I can show you the uh, spring pad adapters that we're gonna have to remove and paint. All right, so got the wheel off and I set up some lights so it'd look cool over here. Uh, but you can see the lower uh, spring pad adapter. I got this from Bag Riders. It basically allows you to run like a universal bag on a universal spring perch. And it was handy for this setup because it fit perfectly. Unfortunately though, as you can see, it did start to rust 
and I think I just maybe didn't pay enough attention when I installed them. I thought they had some sort of clear coat or something, but I'm thinking that was just like a machining oil uh, and it obviously wore out and now the thing has started rusting. So we need to pull that out and then we're going to uh, try to grind off a little bit of the rust. It's just surface stuff. And then we'll seal it up with some rust converter and paint it and then reinstall it. Um, so the air the airbag currently is inflated. I'm gonna go ahead and break the bolt loose down there and then we're gonna let all the pressure out of the bags and then be able to pull these things out. Eh, not too bad in terms of rust. You know what I'm thinking? This is probably from when we went to uh, West Virginia skiing and the salt on the roads probably got kicked up because it's a little uneven. You can see the outside, not as much rust as the inside. So it would make sense if it was uh, kicking kicking salt up into the, into the wheel well and covering this and starting to corrode it. So yeah, we're gonna seal this with some paint. I already took out the other side, but we also need to get the top hats because those are made out of metal too. And I'm sure that if these weren't clear coated, those weren't either. So we're gonna, we're gonna do everything. Well, at least these things are pretty easily serviceable. I will say that a lot easier than changing out factory air springs or uh, changing out the factory steel springs. You know, not as not as bad rust on this. Again, a little bit more on one side where I would think the inside is that gets more rust. But yeah, we're gonna disassemble this, just a couple more bolts, and then we'll go spray paint it outside. All right, so while the paint is drying, we're gonna go ahead and take the rear wheels as well as the front ones over to my friend who has a small tire shop. And we're gonna see if they have a misbalance to them because I've been noticing a shake from my steering wheel and it's gotta be, I'm hoping from the wheels just being misbalanced and not like a bad tire or something like that. So we're gonna take a good look at these wheels today. I'm hoping that's the issue. We'll throw them in the back of the truck, get them balanced, let you know what the issue is there and then we'll put the uh, suspension back together since of course it's drying like I said and then we'll take it for a drive. So we just got back from the tire shop and I have some unfortunate news to share with you guys. It looks like one of these wheels has a bend. I went even marked it but you can probably tell without even the marking where it's bent and uh yeah it's really unfortunate because we're getting a small shake in the car now i will say that all four tires did get rebalanced uh none of them were properly or i should say fully balanced to the point that they were zeroed out all of them needed some work the rear ones we completely took off the weights and just started over uh, but definitely this one has a small bend in it which you can see i'll put a clip from my phone here And that's what's gonna cause some shake, although, you know, the tire does kind of suppress that. And then there's also one tire that we marked because it looked like it could have a possible uh, defect in it that would be causing a vibration as well. So we're gonna find out soon enough and see if uh, these things rebalanced give us any better uh, performance or any less noise vibration harshness because that's what I was getting in the car before and hopefully we don't have any more wheel shake. But let's go ahead and take a look at those uh, spring adapters. Here they are. It's nice, nice finish. I should have done this the first time around, obviously. But hey, you know what they say, if you ain't doing it twice, you ain't doing it right. So whatever, we grinded them all down, then cleaned them with brake cleaner, and then we sprayed them with the rust reformer spray from Rust-Oleum. They look great, a little bit of pitting from the 
uh, from the rust that was there, but no big deal. It's just kind of surface pitting. So now we can reassemble everything and throw it back in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, and then soon enough we'll be on the road. So now we're gonna go ahead and start the car up. And uh, as usual, when you start up a car that you just replace the fuel filter on, there's gonna be no pressure in the system. So we're gonna go to key position two and let it prime. And now we can go ahead and start her up. There you go. All right, let's uh, move some cars out of the way. And uh, I got the GoPro here. So you guys can come along on a drive with me and we'll get to see if the steering angle sensor works. I know the light switch works and hopefully the, uh, the wheels are balanced and I'm, I think I have an idea what we're gonna do. So stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you what my idea is. Ah, uh, dang it. Dang it, we just left the driveway and it's already got a uh, ABS traction control little malfunction from obviously the steering angle sensor um, I don't know I think the only other thing we can do is turn the wheel side to side and maybe that'll recalibrate it but if not I mean I have another wheel with another angle sensor that we'll have to try so let's try it we'll go all the way left all the way right and then back to center no this is a bad steering angle sensor I got well, at least the wheel's good, uh, so we'll use the extra steering angle sensor that we have. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna bring us to the highway. We'll hop on and then uh, hopefully see if this thing has any wheel shake or not. Get a little bit of driving footage for you guys. All right, so the wheel shake is definitely not as bad as it was before, and actually there's no more wheel shake from the front. So those got balanced pretty well. There was a possible tire defect that we saw in, in one of the front wheels, but it, it was kind of hard, and, and me and AJ, we couldn't really decide if it was the rim or the tire. So uh, the rear of the car, where that bend is, I'm feeling a little bit of a vibration. Um, so that's to be expected because there is a bend in the wheel. So, so now I want to kind of get you guys' opinion because uh, I'm not sure how to proceed from here. I have a couple of options and option number one would be leave everything as is, obviously. 
Uh, but more importantly, you know, we have the set of uh, replica wheels on the E39 528i. They're pretty well finished, you know, they could use a refinishing, but I know that they have good tires and I know they have no bends. So I was thinking maybe putting those on this car and then taking the 525i wheels, which we have, which have good tires as well and they're OEMs, uh, maybe taking those and putting those on the 520i to sell it. That way, you know, it's an OEM car and it's got OEM wheels. Um, and then these wheels, I, I don't know, I would maybe try to sell them and then just kind of dump more money into those replica style 65 M5 rims and get those looking good. And then uh, I would still have a set of style 66 rims to be fair. So I would be able to put those on my silver wagon. Um, and then at that point I would not I would not have any more uh, spare rims, spare E39 size rims, but at least, you know, I would have sold the, these bad replicas and I would have wheels refinished and all that. So it's kind of like a huge shuffle of wheels. Let me know what you guys think, if it's worth it. Uh, I'm not sure, do you think I should just save up my money and try to buy some OEM style 65 M5 rims? Or, you know, leave leave the ones that I have on now, now and I don't know. I'm just really discouraged at this point because you know these tires, you know, they're giving me a brake ABS fault because the tires are the wrong size. One of the rims is bent, and I don't know if that can be fixed. I'm gonna have to make some phone calls. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I, I'm not sure what to do. I'll try to get some noise of the vibration that I'm hearing, maybe put that in. But uh, now we're on our way back home now. I think I'm probably gonna stop and grab some food, and then we'll conclude the video next. Well, that was a fun spirited drive I hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, as I said I'm not sure what to do about the wheels now because having them rebalanced they definitely ride a lot better but the rear wheel is definitely bent and it's gonna cause issues long term with the tire wear I'm sure um, so I'm, I'm not sure you know I, I could call around see if we can get that fixed up uh, then at that point the issue with those wheels is the chrome finish on them so I'd have to go pay two to three hundred dollars to get the chrome removed and then on top of that I would have to pay more supplies or labor, whatever, to get the wheels done. So it'd be kind of an investment to get these things uh, top notch, but we do have that extra set of Style 65 replicas. So maybe we'll take those off the car and I can put the other wheels that we have on instead. And so let me know what you guys think. Anyways, we got a lot of work done today. Uh, we do need to change out that clock spring with another one that I have here. Hopefully, you know, hopefully these junkyard parts, you know, it's a bet when you're going to get something good or bad. So hopefully the next junkyard one that we install is good. But that's going to conclude today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Leave a like, a comment, and subscribe before you go. And as always, I hope everyone has an awesome day. We'll see you next time.